media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Sean, things looking up on the energy front as a whole? Yeah, I mean... uh... I saw people try to call the top. What was it, two weeks ago? But things keep uh, moving higher. Um, we have uh, oil and gas plays that are doing extraordinarily well, up like, you know, 30% <laughs> in a little over a month. Can't beat that. Um, and I just added a coal play to my um, to my uh, natural resources newsletter today uh, just because... Uh, we saw the Energy Information Administration come out on Monday and say that um, coal use by U.S. utilities would be up probably, a, this is all a guesstimate, probably around 22% over the winter. And uh, that's because the price of natural gas has gotten so high, those utilities that can switch to coal will switch to coal. It's interesting, uh, the... The eco mob saying natural gas is evil, but compared to burning coal, what do you think is better for the planet? Well, I don't know anyone in the eco mob who does say natural gas is evil. Oh uh, well, you're, you're uh, not talking, but here in Vancouver they do. The city council wants to ban natural gas. Well, it says that, but nonetheless, um, I think coal is an awful thing to use. If you can use anything else, we should. Natural gas is a cleaner burning tool. It really is. Um, you know, we have our problems um, for getting it, but pretty much we have problems with any type of, any type of stored energy. Uh, so unless all you're using is solar without batteries, you know, and even then, I mean, we make solar plants as well. We're just lucky they're in China. That's all. So, you know, I mean, um, I'm not pro-coal, but I'm pro-profit. So I see an opportunity in coal. I've added one stock. I may add more. So, you know, there's um, real potential there, partly because Wall Street doesn't want to admit this is happening. I mean, uh, we saw the stock that I recommended to my subscribers, and I know you guys don't like these names, but it reported preliminary earnings, not not like final earnings on like Monday. At the same time that that report from the Energy Information Administration uh came out, and uh, that stock just went to roof, but it sold off nearly as much the next day. What's that tell you? That means Wall Street doesn't believe the story. I believe the story. I think coal's going higher. I think it has a lot of things going for it. The biggest thing being that it's damn cheap compared to other forms of energy. So, I mean, um, we can talk about long-term costs, and for many of those reasons, solar becomes cheaper over the longer term, but Wall Street doesn't think long-term. Wall Street thinks the coming quarter, maybe. That's, that's the long term for Wall Street. Now, China, of course, has had a, an energy crisis to go along with their real estate crisis in Evergrande. Their factories that produce so many of the goods that we use here can't get enough coal to keep running. Running out of energy is not a sign of a slowdown. If anything, things are heating up. Now, there were supply issues, and they were having a fight with Australia and stuff like that. So, yeah, you can see um, that is a problem. But um, I think calls for a slowdown globally or in North America and such like that are really overstated. People have money in their pockets now. I mean, I just um, posted a chart uh, for my uh, latest monthly issue of, um, of like, wealth megatrends, and I had a chart of how much money consumers have in the bank. It helps that we mail them a lot of checks. But consumers have a lot of money in the bank. And so that's probably going to fuel economic growth for at least the next few quarters. And uh, if there are gifts to buy, of course, we know the problems at the docks, but if there are gifts to buy, people are probably going to buy gifts. 
So, um, you know, I mean, I'm not nearly as bearish as many of my contemporaries. Let me say that. Right. And if you can't find the actual gift, why not give uh, your loved one a gift certificate for when it comes in? Yeah. Or else, you know, who knows? Who, who, who knows what will be on the tree? I've heard school-age kids talk about Bitcoin now, which means they know more about it than I, I can tell you that much. But, you know, I mean, uh, who knows what the next big thing will be this Christmas? Mobox is one thing that I'm kind of betting on. Uh, we have a couple positions in that. I think um, that especially what's with happening with the cost of wages and stuff like that, we're definitely going to see more robots moved into the economy. If jobs can be replaced, they will be replaced. But it turns out not as many jobs could be replaced by robots as we thought, at least not yet, at least not by the least uh, sophisticated models. So that's good. You know, keep more people working that way, working for longer anyway. And uh, we'll... See what happens there, but I am big on robots, big on regular energy, big on the battery metals, big on the EV revolution. These are all mega trends that are going on, and uh, so I'm just making the most of them. Right now, uh, Europe, I think, has shown us the teething pains you can have when you decide to switch from traditional energy to alternative energy. Their wind farms were becalmed for several weeks upping the demand for natural gas, which was in short supply. They had to turn on coal-fired plants that they were actually starting to tear down, so they had to repair them. And uh, then they couldn't get the coal to run that either. So uh, is there a, a case for, does there have to be some kind of coordination to make sure it's a smooth transition or being a free enterprise society, we're going to have bumps and, and uh, bruises along the way but in the end, we'll have a very efficient system. Well, I don't know how efficient or how smooth it'll be. I mean, any transition is bumpy. I mean, when we made the transition from horses to cars, there were incredible bumps along the way. And I don't just mean on the roads. I mean, some people hated the idea of cars coming in. Of course, the equine flu kind of changed that situation. But there was real, real resistance to it. And... um People said, you know, car bad things that they didn't do and all this stuff, and they complained about this and that and extolled the value of horses. Um, you know, I mean, uh, George Patton, famous tank riding general, or at least he commanded an army that had a lot of learning. Back when he was in the army, he actually wrote books on the value of cavalry and how that wasn't going to go away. <laughs> that was the, that was the, um, the prevailing outlook at the time. During World War II, we had more cavalry than we'd ever had before, simply because that's that people stuck with what they knew. Of course, you know, tanks rolling down the street changed that picture pretty quickly. But um, I think we'll see resistance to new energy, you know, kicking and screaming the entire way. Would large-scale coordination help? Yes, we're not likely to see it. Um, the U.S. can't help can't hold up its end, thanks to Joe Manchin. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, um, but it'll come by fits and starts, and things will move along. We are getting to the point where alternative energy is cheaper than the regular kinds of energy we use, um, and even including energy storage, which is what you have to think about when you're talking about alternative energy. You have to store that electricity for when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing. Well, even including that, it's still more expensive now, but it's getting down there. So change is coming, you know, and um, I think that the EV megatrend is only going to get stronger. I mean, um, I was looking at things for my uh, presentation uh, in New Orleans on Friday uh, when I'll be speaking at the New Orleans Investment Conference, and I'm talking about making money from the EV megatrend. And um, certainly there are different car manufacturers, you can buy, but also the battery metals. I mean, the upside in those is just extraordinary, especially when you consider how depressed those prices were for so darn long. I mean, uh, so I, uh, I already have subscribers making money on this. Um, we have taken games along the way. Some, some stocks we've actually re-entered because <laughs> we saw another opportunity. But, you know, I mean, the upside potential is there. These things are just getting started. We're in a brand new cycle for it, and it uh, should be quite extraordinary by the time it's done. 
We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, is uranium still hot? Uh, it is. Uh, the latest news is that Kazakhstan um, is going to launch its own physical uranium fund. And so um, if the physical uranium providers like Kazakhstan have their own funds, are they going to be selling any excess uranium? You have to wonder about that, don't you? But that really sparked a um, price move. In uranium, we actually took gains on a couple positions. We have others. Um, and uh, just because, you know, that's the kind of explosive move you want to, you want to take gains on, just in case there's not a like, follow-through. Now, the market can uh, prove a liar out of me and have no after that move. Maybe it'll just keep picking up and up and up. We know for years that um, an, a big move is coming in uranium. Will it be explosive? Will it be gradual? We'll have to see. Um, I'm speaking to at least one uranium stock, but I'm in New Orleans. I always like to get an update on what the people in the industry are saying. And, uh, yeah, there's extraordinary potential there. Just because, I mean, we've seen a supply-demand squeeze building for so long. People have warned about it, warned about it, warned about it. Now it's finally coming through. And if, and if the catalyst is um, more physical uranium funds coming online starting up well that, that's it advancing something that was already in place because they're removing supply from the market but eventually you we're going to get to that supply to, s- supply demand gap anyway it's just um how many miles have to go out of business before you got there so i'm quite bullish on, on uranium even though we took some gains you know i mean what i <laughs> hate think what we took on that slice of chemical was like 130 percent something like that we'll probably buy it again it's a great play you know um but people should do their own research before they buy anything one thing about the uranium market is a small market unless you're buying australian stocks which if you are that's great you know there's a lot of opportunity there but uh in some ways the australian stock market makes uh the vancouver stock market look respectable so be very careful about anything you buy People definitely need to do research because uh, you can get hosed. But then again, the upside potential is very, very good as well. Aerospace. Uh, we have word that the Chinese <laughs> are perhaps testing orbital hypersonic hypersonic missiles, Does and the U.S. might be behind in that race. Was this just propaganda to, to spur a certain sector, and is there are there investment opportunities there? Yeah, well, how many times can you blow up the world and doesn't make a difference if you blow it up faster than the other guy, right? I mean, uh, I am constantly stunned at how countries around the world, all the leading ones, find so many ways to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars inventing new ways to blow ourselves up, and they can't ha- help out their own working people. It's nuts. So I'm sure there are ways to play on this. Um, I'd rather talk about things like a helium play or there's some new fusion stock. I mean, it's all research and stuff, but the stuff coming down the pike there, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, there's plenty of aerospace things you can invest in. And if you want to invest in going up the world, go for it. I'm not going to tell anyone not to invest in something because it's, um, looks kind of shady. I do that myself. That's why I, I buy coal stocks. It's just that I just shake my head at what they're doing. It's like nuts. All right, so is it a hyperspace? Is it, uh, is it hyperspace? What's it called? Hyper, hypersonic. Uh, hypersonic. Is it a hypersonic missile? Or is it, as the Chinese say, some new kind of um, space vehicle? Um, obviously, it would be unmanned. I can't imagine what that would do to people to put them in a... <laughs> I'm going at that speed. But nonetheless, I mean, um, you know, I just shake my head. So if people want to pursue that dream of investing and blowing up the world, go right for it. Um, I'll choose other ways to spend my money because there's so many fantastic things with potential. I don't know enough about 
building new weapons to blow up the world to make any kind of recommendation in that area. There I'll have to declare my own ignorance. Yeah, and by the time you find out it works, it's too late to collect any profits from it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, it would be an interesting futures market. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So, uh, Sean, if somebody's interested in seeing you in New Orleans, where do they go? Um. Well, I mean, uh, they actually have to go to the conference. This conference is in the flesh this time. And uh, so there's that. Uh, I had links on my wealth-wave.com website, which is a free easy. So I'll bring you there, too. Um, you know, I mean, uh, it, it it is going on now. And, uh, so, um, or I should say it's just about to start. So, um, I'm not sure exactly what people can do now. If it's in New Orleans, then they should definitely go buy a ticket and they should go. It's going to be a great conference. A lot of people have been trapped inside for what, two years now? They're definitely ready to get out and actually uh, bring some stuff for people to see. Um, whether it's new projects that they're actually working on new businesses, new software. It'll be very, very useful. So I think it'll be a great show and well worth anyone's time. Sean, good luck in New Orleans, and thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. If you have any questions for Sean or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.